Hello, I'm Bob Matheny, Mayor of Zebulon. This is the Zebulon's Mayor Show. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, you know, this month, uh, being the month of December, we only had one meeting, and that was filmed for this, uh, this station. Uh, so we got the rest of the month off, no public hearings, no work sessions. Uh, got to enjoy the uh, Christmas uh, holidays and New Year's. And here we are in January, so I don't have uh, a work session to tell you about. But joining me today is our police chief, Tim Hayworth. Tim, very glad to have you here. Good to be here, Mayor. Thank uh, you. Tim uh, very recently uh, went to Bangladesh, and he was selected to go there uh, to help train the police force in Bangladesh, and we're going to talk about that trip, show you some pictures, and uh, you know, I'm glad to have you back in uh, in Zebulon. It's so, good to be back. <laughs> you were gone uh, five weeks total. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it took you two, one to get there, and one to get back. <laughs> it was, getting back was pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, well, it's you know, it's, it's really interesting, and we're going to talk to the people and show them where Bangladesh is, and 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 talk about that. But how were you selected for this? Um, the program is ran by the Department of Justice, by the U.S. Department of Justice, and it, it happened to be that they were looking for experienced law enforcement instructors to go to Bangladesh to teach in, in various uh, areas of law enforcement, and one of the instructors that um, has, has already been in some other countries, he referred me um, right. to the program, actually gave them my name, right. and they contacted me and asked me if I was interested in uh, going and assisting on the program. So it's somebody that I know that knew somebody else right. that was involved with the Department of Justice. But, but a little background on that, Tim, is that and a lot of people may not realize, you do some teaching here. Uh, it, it's not like, hey, this guy can teach. Right. You, you illustrated that you can. I, I've been a uh, North Carolina State certified instructor, law enforcement instructor, for about uh, 14 years. Right. So I do a lot of our in-service training here at the, the Zebulon Police Department, and then I also um, I've I've done a lot of advanced uh, manager, uh, police manager training, right. super uh, supervision training, and uh, interviews and internal affairs. A lot of those things for uh, departments around the state. You had a strong background that fit right into this niche. Yes. Uh, well, look, who else went with you? Um, on my trip, there were um, several law enforcement officers from around the country. I worked with uh, um, very closely with a co-teacher named Ron Wood. He was from Englewood, California. Uh, there were some police officers there from Seattle, um, one from Portland. So uh, from this area, Greg Lawson has been there, and he's from Roanoke Rapids. And then Betty Reynolds from Wilson, they have, they've also been there. Right. So there's three of us I know of from the state of North Carolina, and then there's actually instructors from, from all over the country. Right. And I might add that while you went to Bangladesh, I, I think you told me before that they go to other parts of the, the world as well. They're actually in about 20 different locations around right. the world. Right. Okay. Well, I guess the question that some people are asking, and some are not, but where is Bangladesh? Okay. Uh, one thing about what we were just talking about, though, the program is actually called ISATAP, which right. is the International Criminal Investigations Training Assistance okay. Program. Okay. That is a program of Department of Justice. Right. But okay. Bangladesh, it's, uh, as far as the country, Bangladesh is located in uh, the eastern portion of India. And actually, Bangladesh used to be a part of India. And as you can see on the map, uh, Bangladesh is kind of wedged up into the eastern portion of India, right above the Bay of Bengal. Actually, India then is on both sides of Bangladesh. Burma is to the east and uh, just a little bit below Bangladesh. And then China, you can't see it on our map, but it's directly below China. And, and Bangladesh was at one time East Pakistan. It was. Um, originally, it was all, uh, the, the whole country was, was part of the British rule, and uh, India was, was referred to as the Raj, and that's the, uh, those were the British folks that ruled India, was the Raj. And then in uh, 1947, um, India actually uh, split, and Pakistan um, formed their own country out of India in 1947. And then um, in 1971, because Pakistan then was West Pakistan, which is currently Pakistan, and then East Pakistan, which is Bangladesh, but they were on opposite sides of the country. So right. it was one country split by the huge country of India. Right. So then in 1971, there was a civil war, and um, they actually 
got their independence from Pakistan and actually um, I have a picture in, in just a second that will show which actually is a monument from the 1971 Civil War. Well, that's a, a quick history lesson of the, of the country. What, what is the importance of the country? I mean, well, by that I mean what is their economy based on? Uh, uh, what do they export? Uh, what do they import? Okay, a few things here if we can... Uh, uh, this was just a picture. I want to use this in opening. This is the people of Bangladesh. Right. Um, and we would go places and people would just stand there and look at us as being Americans. They uh, really right. like Americans, right. which is one of the key reasons we're there is, is they like us so much. Um, as far as geography went, um, Mayor, uh, this was also just a geographical picture this is the uh, Pathan River in Bangladesh, which is also known as the Great Ganges, uh, one of the seven great rivers of the world. And uh, just to, uh, before I get to your, your question there, I wanted to show this monument. Mm -hmm. This was part of the last question you asked about the independence from Pakistan right. in 1971. There was a massacre at this spot. This is on the uh, Bangladesh National Police Academy property where I was for two weeks. Right. And uh, this monument is there where there was um, a big massacre of Bangladesh police officers by the Pakistan army. Right. And um, some of the, uh, we'll leave this picture up, some of the things that they do is uh, Bangladesh is famous for their, their farmers and they have a large, um, a large amount of rice, this thousands and thousands of acres of, of rice um, of sugar cane, you see a lot of natural sugar cane over there growing, uh, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, uh, mangoes, papayas, bananas, and actually it's really the first time I've, I've ever eaten that, that fresh of, of fruit. Mm -hmm. The papayas, they, they squeeze it and make juice out, juice out of it all the time, and we drank a lot of that. And the bananas, it's just unbelievable how good their bananas are. I mean, they're small and really fresh and they're actually sweet tasting. So. Um, that's most of their economy. Uh, they do a few other things, and they, uh, I've got some pictures later on in the, in the program. Uh, silk is, is one of their, it's, it's what they call the silk belt right. that runs through India and Burma and through Bangladesh. So they do a lot of, uh, uh, of silk exporting and then pearls. The Bay of Bengal, they get a lot of pearls in the Bay of Bengal, and they're also famous for the pearls. Right, and they export some of all and they, of that. They export right. a lot of that. So they're really... Um, as far as trade, they are, they're a good partner um, to America. And in fact, since I've been back from Bangladesh, I can't tell you how many people I've, I've had tell me, I never even knew where Bangladesh was, right. and now I realize that the, the shirt I bought was made in Bangladesh, right. or my tie. Right. And a right. lot of people are telling me that, so it's kind of okay. funny. Well, jumping over to the, um, to the, the reason for your trip, what, what does the Department of Justice, what are they trying to accomplish for this? I mean, what's the reason for your trip? The, the idea behind the Americans going there and training their police department is that their police department is, um, they're, they're seriously outdated. Their SOPs are outdated. Their procedures are outdated. They're, they're operating um, out of manuals that were written in the 40s and uh, they still use a lot of techniques that are, that are considered obsolete in the United States, and they've not had training in, in, in technology and a lot of those things. So what, what happens is citizens in Bangladesh generally do not have a trust of the police. They don't trust their police. They don't trust their government. And in fact, much of the government is corrupt. Uh, much of the police department uh, is corrupt. And the citizens know that, and the upper echelon in the police departments, they know that. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to change that. And the idea is that if the citizens of Bangladesh begin to trust their police department and begin to trust their government and have faith in, in the folks that are policing them and the, and the folks that are governing them, then it will actually reduce the amount of, of homegrown terrorism. These countries in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, a lot of times terrorists come out of those countries. And the way these terrorists are, are born and the way they're raised is they hate the government. They hate law enforcement. They hate the government. They feel oppressed. They feel like they're being mistreated by everybody and taken advantage of by everybody. So it, uh, it, it, kind of, it becomes a breeding ground for terrorism. So the U.S. thinks if we reduce that, 
and we help these police officers treat people uh, decently and treat people with respect, uh, then actually people can begin to trust their government and have less reason for homegrown terrorism. Trying to get ahead of the curve, so to speak. Exactly. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. That uh, I'm sure some people wonder why in the world we send folks over there to. to I wondered that them. myself when I first went. <laughs> now you know. Now you know as well. Um, well, let's let's talk about the training. Who did you train over there? And and uh, just talk you talk a little bit. And you've explained this to me earlier about some of the hierarchy within the police force and how how they get promoted or by promotions or whatever. Right. That's because kind of. Maybe, right? Um, I'm, I'm going, if you don't mind real quick, I'll run through some photographs and when okay, they show sure. this, they can show them with the people of, of Bangladesh. Okay. I've got several pictures on here that we can run through quickly okay. and then I'll kind of get to that answer. All right, sure. This was just a, a, a photograph here of, um, this is an ancient ruin in Bangladesh where the monks, the ancient Hindu monks used to use these small rooms for meditation and, and things. This um, very, very old country, in fact, we saw... Uh, artifacts there that were from as far back as as 3 BC so a uh, very old country a lot of neat things like that just a little picture of um, uh, these are water buffalo you see these on the street a lot moving uh, loads of hay loads of rice loads of bamboo wood those types of thing and uh, this gentleman here is cutting the grass and they mow the grass over there with small hand sickles put the uh, grass in burlap bags and then take the burlap bags of grass home to feed their cows. So right. it uh, accomplishes two tasks. They get their, their cattle fed, they get the grass mowed, but it's, uh, I told one of the gentlemen over there that my lawnmower will mow a uh, path that's five foot wide at one time. And he just looked at me with wide eyes and it's like, wow. <laughs> um, <coughs> this is just something, to see how, how primitive and technology go hand in hand over there. This is a, what we would call gravely stand behind rotor tiller. And they take these things over there and they, they um, adapt them and hook them to a wagon. And you see he's driving down the road. A guy will be sitting on this little uh, makeshift seat here and there'll be huge loads of hay or maybe crops or livestock and they're driving these things right down the main street. Um, a huge load of hay, very hardworking people. This guy is on a bicycle and he's got a load of hay larger than what I would fit on my pickup truck. Um, this is a picture of the street and just how crowded the streets are. And I'll talk about that in a minute um, when you have uh, one of your other questions. Let's see here if my... It's a picture of a couple of the uh, roadside crew here cleaning the side of the street. <laughs> a couple goats there right on the side of the road. And uh, I, I just do this picture and there's some of the food. Rice, curry, and hot peppers. Everything, everything over there. Yeah, I think you wrote initially and, uh, in your blog that, that the peppers were really great and then later on that your love for them waned a little bit. <laughs> after about a week, curry, this is a boiled egg that's soaked in curry. Uh, so after a week of curry and the hot peppers, absolutely right, <laughs> I was ready for something different. And uh, to your question about the economy, this is a rice field and it's just a, um, a huge, huge field of, of rice. You would see these, and this is a guy, the local economy, um, they do a lot of vegetables, like I said, right. this is a street vendor right. selling those vegetables. Uh, a small shop here where they're uh, doing sewing. You'll see it looks like a mini storage buildings, and there'll be lines and lines of these mini storage buildings, and this is actually a sewing shop here, but you'll see all kinds of businesses in those. And you ask about the silk, or we talked about right. the silk. Right. This is actually a picture at a silk shop where they actually have the silkworms there, they boil them, they pull the thread off, then they weave them, then they dye them, and then they sell, uh, sell some of the silk right there. I bought some scarves and ties while I was there, and they export a lot of that. That, that really looked like brand new equipment, too. It, yeah, I mean, ain't, it's, again, the technology uh, yeah. and the primitive side by side. Right. Little boy here, I gave him an American dollar, and you would have thought uh, I gave him a hundred bucks. I mean, right. he was so excited right. about this. Um, Dollar. The dollar is very strong in, in Bangladesh. It's actually about um, 80 taka is about a dollar. And the average person in Bangladesh makes 65 dollars, American dollars, a month. So uh, this shows the, uh, the economy there. Getting to your last question that, that you had asked, who did we teach? These are, uh, this is a class of people that we taught. These are Bangladesh soldiers 
uh, or police officers. Right. They uh, they do a lot of times the military and the police mix a lot over right. there where we right. we don't do that here in the United States. And um, these guys are, are sub inspectors and inspectors and sub inspectors and inspectors do most of the work in Bangladesh. They are the ones out investigating uh, the crimes. Constables being their lower ranking officers, about 140,000 of them in the country of Bangladesh. And that's one of the things we're trying to change is that constables over there aren't, aren't really allowed to do police work. Um, you ask about hierarchy, it's very um, status oriented. If you're a constable, uh, you're low ranking, you have to bring the higher ranking officers their tea. You may drive them around. Your job may be nothing but to drive an assistant chief around, open the door for him or her, um, actually go to the market with them, carry their groceries, um, all kinds of things that they do. So uh, the hierarchy is, is really in, in bad shape over there. In fact, um, we had guys in our classes that had been police officers for 30 years, and they were still sub-inspectors, low-ranking officers. And uh, if you have enough money, if you have enough social clout, you may go in as that man's supervisor. You don't know anything about the job, but you have enough money to buy your way into that position or social clout, and you become a supervisor. And that's what, part of what you're trying to change. It's part of the problem. We're really trying to show them um, that that form of promoting people and that form of hiring people and, and putting them through the academy. Folks can go into the academy, a short abbreviated academy, They've got enough money, they've got enough social clout, and all of a sudden they're an assistant superintendent of police and they're supervising all of these people right. who are out there working uh, the crimes. All right. I understand. Well, let's talk a little bit about the nature of the training, that being what you trained them in, and then we'll move into where you went. Okay. Um, this is a picture of we're doing a, a crime scene here, and this is some of the uh, the local police officers that we're training and they're, they're doing some measurements out here. We have a, a mock crime scene ma made up and I'll mention this quickly see the, the young female officer here. They do have female officers in the Bangladesh Police Department. However, the female officers are not allowed to arrest men. And um, on the other hand, male officers are not allowed, they can arrest females but they cannot handcuff a female. Can they detain the other side? Only verbally. They can only tell sure. them to wait, so if but they they, leave, if they want to leave, they they can't they can't do anything about it. And we're again, that's another well, one of the issues that that we're trying to, to train. But what we did while we were there, we did two classes. We did a uh, a two week interview class where we're trying to teach them how to talk to people and how to get um, to the bottom of of the crime of what's going on without resorting to um, torture and electric shock and those kind of things, which. Um, it's kind of old school police work in right. Bangladesh and right. they're doing those types of things and we're trying to get them away from it and steer them away from that. We also did a two-week class on basic crime scene investigation. Simple things for us as far as how to lift fingerprints, how to uh, make a, an impression of a footprint or a, a, a tire track, how to uh, take crime scene photographs and uh, a lot of those basic crime scene classes. Well, Tim, uh, I know you went to three cities there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, one, how you got there. Uh, okay. I know that's pretty interesting. We don't dwell on that. But uh, uh, how you got there, the routes you took, and then where you went. Um, it was a long trip. We, uh, I left Raleigh and went from Raleigh to JFK, and then uh, which is an hour and a half or so flight. And then from JFK, I went to Abu Dhabi. Uh, and Abu Dhabi is in the um, Emirates. It's the United Arab Emirates, or UAE. And that going over was about a 13 and a half hour flight. Coming back from Abu Dhabi to JFK was about 15 hours. Um, but once I got to Abu Dhabi, I had to do another flight, uh, about five and a half hours to Dhaka. And Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh. And then once in Dhaka, I did two other flights to, uh, to get to Sharda, or the first city that I actually worked in. So it took me five airplane rides and um, about 30 hours to actually get on the ground in Bangladesh. You were ready to go to bed, weren't you? I was, I was tired. <laughs> I'm sure you were. Well, let's talk about Dhaka very briefly. I mean, okay. you, you told me that's the hub and, and that's where you started from. So just, just a little bit about that. Dhaka is the hub. It's the capital city of Bangladesh. and um, 
An interesting fact is that Dhaka is the most densely populated city in the world. And in fact, there are 12 million people in Dhaka. And it's about land-wise the size of San Francisco. And just to keep that in perspective, San Francisco has about 1 million people. So it's 12 times more populated than San Francisco. I've got a picture that kind of shows that. Um, this is nice. We're, uh, when I stayed in Dhaka, this is um, a four-star hotel, the Westin Hotel. Very, very nice. They only have these real nice hotels in Dhaka. Once right. you get out of Dhaka, you don't see the fancy hotels. Um, but this is uh, the sink in the room that I'm in. This is directly across the street. I'm taking this out of a window in the hotel. Um, so you see the street is, is mostly gravel there. There is a, a little paved section of the road. Uh, the wires hanging everywhere, the rickshaws, and uh, it's just crowded. This picture really doesn't show how crowded, but I walked across the street and over into a little shopping center, and it's just wall-to-wall -wall people, rickshaws, cars, vans, water buffalo, chickens, goats, everything mixes together, just uh, really packed in tight. Well, I know you left there and went to Charlotte. Right there for two weeks. I did. I left there and went to Sharda. Um, on the first picture of the, the map that I showed, um, Sharda is actually close to Rashahi. Uh, it's kind of a rural area outside of Rashahi. It's about 30 miles um, from Rashahi. So we flew into Rashahi, drove about 30 miles out into Sharda. And um, this is what we taught in Sharda. This is uh, interviews. And these are some of our uh, investigators in the class. They're interviewing one another. And this is actually a picture of the campus in Sharda. And um, the reason that we went to Sharda is it's actually the police academy for the National Police Department is located there. Oh. And in fact, this was a training ground for police officers all the way back as far as the British Raj. They had pictures and they had plaques up in some of the buildings that actually showed the British when they uh, when they ran the policing in, in Bangladesh. And you stayed there, I believe, for uh, two weeks and then went to Bogra. I was there two weeks and then we left Sharda or Rashahi and went to Bogra. And in Bogra, this is a picture of the in-service training center in Bogra. This is where we had our, our classes there. They have these in-service training centers around the country. Remember, it's a it's a national police department, so I had to do a lot of explaining to them how that we have city officers and deputies and state right, troopers right. and how each state is different because Bangladesh, it's, they are all national police, so right. it's, that's why uh, they call themselves soldiers quite often and how they, they blend. Right. But um, this is our in-service training center that we did there in Bogra, and this is a picture of Bogra. This uh, Bogra, again, is a small town of about 300,000 people all crammed together, and this is... Uh, kind of a picture of trying to get down the street there. Also, one other thing is, uh, this is kind of neat, uh, Bogra is famous for its furniture. Uh, they make a lot of handmade furniture there, and this is a gentleman who was on the side of a street, a uh, roadside vendor, and he's hand carving uh, this headboard for a wow. bed. It's pretty awesome. That is awesome. I've seen some of your work, and it, you can do, I think you can do that. Yeah, with a router, maybe. <laughs> Well, that, that, that's really interesting. What did you uh, teach them in Bogra? In Bogra, we taught uh, the basic crime scene class. And um, we went through everything. We taught blood spatter. We taught um, fingerprinting. We actually uh, even set up mock crime scenes. And we had the class as a final exam. They had to go through the crime scenes. They had to photograph the crime scene. They had to measure and sketch the crime scene. They had to tell us what happened, you know, by looking at the blood, looking at the, the scene itself, they had to tell us this was a homicide, this is how um, the person was killed, and there was, uh, you know, cast off blood and, and all those types of things. So um, it was really good. A lot of these officers had been on crime scenes uh, several times and really, I, I think, never really knew that the crime scene um, was, was talking to them. And if they actually went through it step by step like we taught them, that they could um, get a pretty good grasp on what happened. Well, Tim, all the way through, you you talked about you know what you were training them and and uh, the Bangladesh uh, way of doing things versus you know our way of doing things. But you you had told me that uh, in an earlier conversation that that the American policing methodology, I guess, is is something of a model around the world. So you want to expand on that just a little bit. It, it really is, Mayor. Um, 
I mean, I know there's a lot of citizens and a lot of people in here in the United States that um, that maybe have a problem with their local police department, but um, re we really are known around the world as as model police officers. Um, our police departments run fairly effectively, fairly smoothly. We do uh, overall do a great job. They would ask me questions about, you know, do you guys have uh, crossfires? And that's where their police departments over there are famous for having a criminal in custody, taking that criminal to the jail, and while en route to the jail, they get into a shootout with somebody else, and their criminal gets killed. Um, and, you know, I told them that we, we really, in the United States, there's a rogue police officer every now and then, or a rogue politician, but for the vast majority, um, those things are obsolete here in the United States. And I really think that we made a difference with the officers that we taught. The problem is there's 200,000 police officers in, in Bangladesh, and we were teaching 30 at a time. Where are you planning to see? That's what we hope. It's a three-year project over there, and uh, I may or may not go back some other time in a year or two years, but there's going to be Americans over there doing this uh, for the next three years, and um, hopefully we're teaching those to change that can actually change the system, and that's what we're hoping for. And the, the last picture I had is... Uh, this is me and two sub-inspectors. Um, these guys were, were great guys. These guys have both been on the department for years, uh, done tons of investigations, but yet uh, they're still sub-inspectors. And um, I think these are two of the individuals that were changed when we were there, right. and hopefully they'll be able to influence others. Well, obviously you feel good about what you accomplished. And, uh, I and do. I feel good about you having gone. I also feel good about you being back. <laughs> so, Senior, I passed out a lot of town of Zebulon <laughs> pins over there, right. so there's a lot of uh, right. police officers and politicians over there wearing our pins, and, uh, and I'm glad that you all missed me. But uh, um, I said I, I hope that everything ran smooth while I was gone, but not so smooth that you didn't need the, me back. Didn't need you back. I understand. Don't we all? We always feel that way. Well, Tim, thank you so much for coming and, and uh, telling us about this today, and, and uh, I really appreciate it. I uh, hope that you people found this interesting and, and useful, and we're going to leave you with, uh, with a little road trip that, that uh, Tim shot uh, going through the streets of Bogra, I believe it was. So thank you and, uh, for watching, and have a good month. I hope you enjoy this, uh, this ride. It's pretty interesting. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.